Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Craig Burrell, and joining us today from the Australian Army is Warrant Officer Class 1, Andrew Gehrig. We welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria and RSL Queensland, who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony around Australia. Also this evening, wreaths will be laid by visitors at the base of the Pool of Reflection. Please stand and join in singing the National Anthem. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's First World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozier, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families, friends, and all Australians could mourn their loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all, all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight, we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and other operations over more than a century. But first, we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Wreaths and floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Please sit. Today we remember and pay tribute to Prophet James Francis Inglis. Correction, Francis James Inglis. Born in Narracourt in South Australia, Francis Inglis was educated in Port Perry and later became an apprentice blacksmith. However, he found his calling as a Salvation Army officer and was leading the Army Corps in Ararat, Victoria when the First World War began. Initially, 36-year-old Inglis and his wife Florence became involved in local patriotic and recruiting movements, urging young men to enlist. However, according to the local newspaper, when he saw that voluntary enlistment was not meeting with the success he had hoped for, he enlisted himself in June 1916. Inglis was assigned to the 6th Battalion, which along with the 5th, 7th and 8th Battalions formed the 2nd Brigade of the 1st Australian Division. He left Australia with his battalion in September 1916 on board HMAT Euripides, bound for England, and spent almost two months there in training before embarking for France just days before Christmas. Inglis and his fellow reinforcements joined the 6th Battalion in early January 1917 during the freezing Somme winter. In 1917, the 6th Battalion participated in operations that followed up the German withdrawal to the Hindenburg Line and then returned to Belgium to join the Great Offensive launched to the east of Ypres. Among the, battalions, um, among the battles the battalions took part in were those at Minion Road, Polygon Wood, Broodsender and Passchendaele. In late March, Inglis was injured in an accident, receiving burns to his face and neck. He spent about a month in hospital recovering and returned his battalion in mid-May. On the 5th of June, the 6th Battalion was back in the front, near Strasville in northern France. The unit's diary records heavy barrage fire, especially on the supports and line of communication. During the night, the German mixed gas attacks with high explosives and artillery fire increased. At some point during it all, Private Inglis was killed in action. He was buried at Le Creul Military Cemetery in Husbrook, France. He was 38 years old. Private Francis Inglis's death was a great loss to the Arak community. An obituary published in the local newspaper read, Ensign Inglis was one of the most popular officers of the Salvation Army stationed in Ararat, and his fine, generous and frank spirit won the regard of all who knew him. He died as he lived, a manly, upright and God-fearing soldier. Private Francis Inglis is commemorated on the Roll of Honour on my right, among the more than 60,000 Australians who died while serving in the First World War. His photograph is displayed today beside the Pool of Reflection. This is but one of the many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Private Francis James Inglis and all those Australians who have given their lives in the service of our nation. Please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall not grow old as we the left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Lest we forget. Lest we forget.
We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub at Gallipoli with his poor, tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain has thought in his last moments, well, well, it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the last post-ceremony. Thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial and good evening.